On the 31st of July, at least 77 people were killed in a horrific fire in the Marshall Town area in the city of Johannesburg in South Africa. Now, most of those killed, the residents of this build, of this building, were migrants who had come to South Africa in the hope of eking out a better life. Migrants from various parts of the African continent. Now, in the aftermath of this fire, there has been a lot of discussion, a lot of talk about solutions. But what is shocking is that much of this discussion has focused on targeting the migrants. There has been, in fact, a wave of xenophobia whipped up by various political elements. And amid all this, a lot of key structural questions have been ignored. What are the housing conditions that led to this fire? Why are the poor in such a bad state? Why is it that migrants have always been targeted? One of the few organizations that has taken a strong stand against this xenophobia is Abhayali Basse Majindolo, the Shack Dwellers Movement of South Africa. We have with us today Tapelo Mohapi, the General Secretary of the organization, to talk about the fire as well as the politics of the response that has followed it. Thank you so much for joining us. So first of all, see, after the fire, a lot of the discussion and blame is fo focused on migrants, particularly African migrants. And they've been blamed in various ways and in various reasons. But this seems to be an attempt to divide people considering that the larger issue is perhaps the issue of housing faced by the poor. Could you tell us a bit about the structural reasons for the fire? Yes. Um, first and foremost, we'd like to continue to send our condolences to the families uh, of the people who have lost their, life, their loved one during the fire. Uh, Abba Thaliba Sam John Dolo, a Shep Dollar's movement of the poor, believes that a human being is a human being, no matter wherever they find themselves. Uh, we believe that we are all created uh, for by God for the same uh, reasons. And no one must be more superior. No one must be more powerful than the other. We believe in equality. And equality means recognizing the dignity of everyone, regardless of their socioeconomic status and wh whichever country they come from. We are human beings, we believe in humanity after all. Um, the conditions that the working class and migrant workers have been living under in, in the bigger city of Johannesburg, Deben and Cape Town has been that, um, that we are left to die we are, there are no services that are provided to the poorest of the poor. We die in shack fires, we die in floods uh, as a result of the conditions that we are living under. Whether you are living in the shack settlements, uh, you are left to die there. And the reason why people in Marshalltown were died in the manner that they died is because they are poor and they are coming from the working class. It is because they, it is a city that does not care about the poorest of the poor. It is a country that is run by a neoliberal government and the government that, that is interested in profit maximization over people's lives. So the, the people's life does not matter. All that matters is profits. And that's why the city of Johannesburg has never built any affordable housing for the working class and the poor in the inner city. We were denied by apartheid as black people to access the cities. And today we are denied by the elites in the political elites in the government to actually access the cities. There is a crisis of housing in Johannesburg in particular, where there's a backlog of more than 300,000 people who do not have access to housing. And the cities have become so expensive for the working class. We, the working class, are building these cities. And these cities, when they are supposed to accommodate us, we are not accommodated. And it's only the elites that are able to live in these cities. But we are the ones who build the buildings that are in these cities. And yet we can't even afford it because they are overpriced by the capitalist system. Right, Tabela, in this context, given the sort of context you mentioned, I just wanted to ask you how this sort of reflects, how does this fire reflect on the larger approach to the post-apartheid state because there was a specific promise that was made to the people, a promise not only of uh, justice but also of equality, all these uh, slogans that were given at that point of time. How is it that after all these years we are in a position where an incident like this happens? First and foremost, um, we were sold uh, lies by the politicians. The freedom that we were supposed to gain in South Africa in 1994 has been betrayed by politicians who are only in, uh, interested in enriching themselves and their families. So more people are getting richer uh, as politicians and those who are living in shacks, who are working class, who wake up every day to make a living, continue to suffer. The, 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 the living standards in South Africa have dropped 
uh, salaries have dropped. People are living in dire poverty. There is deep inequality. In fact, we are the highest country that where there is highest inequality in the world. Where, where the, there is uh, the poorest of the poor who have to work out whether they have to eat today or they don't have food. And there are people who live in the affluent areas, in big buildings, who have rooms that they, they, that they don't use, and yet there are people who sleep on the streets. So we have a, a, a crisis in the country. A, the freedom that we were supposed to gain was betrayed by those who political elites who took positions and left us to die in the manner that we are dying. So we are not free. We cannot celebrate fake freedom because what we have in this country is fake freedom. We continue to die in shack settlements. We continue to suffer because of starvation. We continue, our children continue not to get better education. Uh, the health system in this country is very expensive for the poorest of the poor. People die on a daily basis because they can't get access to health. So you cannot say that you are free. And therefore, the government of the day has not done enough in fact, has not done anything to address the inequalities that were caused by the apartheid era and the inequalities that still exist today where people are poor, you have the poorest, the gap between the poorest of the poor and those who are rich is very huge. And yet the people who build the economy, the people who work the land are the black majority, those who are impoverished, the working class, are the ones that suffer the consequences, but they are the ones who are building this economy of this country. It is unfortunate that after 30 years into the so-called democracy, we still talk about women not being able to access uh, toilets, water and sanitation. We are still talking about people not being able to access uh, sanitation in this country. We are talking about people dying like flies in, in, the, in the informal settlement as a result of the floods, as a result of the fires. So um, the poorest of the poor, if they are not attacked by a brutal state, if they are not attacked by those who are fighting against those who speak for the poor, you, we are left to die in the manner that the people in Marshalltown have died. Absolutely. Yeah. In this context, uh, talking about the people who died in Marshalltown, like we said, many of them are immigrants. And it's uh, quite unfortunate to see uh, such a huge wave of xenophobia that has actually seized many parts of the country, people blaming migrants in all kinds of way for this disaster. And your organization is one of the few which has taken a very strong stand against this. In fact, I believe in your statement, it has termed this kind of an approach, uh, pure fascism. And uh, like you said, this is not the first time such attacks have taken place. We have seen previous instances of attacks on uh, migrants from other African countries. So could you talk a bit about the politics that is kind of leading to this xenophobia or what really are the roots of xenophobia in South Africa? Yes, we have seen governments um, when they fail to deliver for the poorest of the poor, when they fail to actually you know, provide services for the working class and the poor in the country. They blame the other vulnerable group of people. And in this case, are our brothers and sisters from the African continent, whom I see themselves myself in them. Um, we are only separated by rivers and mountains, but we are our brothers and sisters. Our colors and, 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 and humanity means that we are actually from the same um, uh, 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 continent and that we actually should recognize other uh, as human beings before anything else. So it is unfortunate that um, the government of the day is using some extremist uh, fascism where the poorest of the poor are now fighting amongst themselves for the crumbs while the capitalists are taking the biggest uh, piece of the pie. And we are now made to believe that the brother from Malawi, the brother from Mozambique, the brother from Angola, the brother from um, uh, Zambia is the one that is making me poor because it's taking my job, which is not the case. The case is we are poor because of a capitalist system that is only interested to take the resources of Africa and they take them away from us. And that's why we are poor. When Matana, when people were shot and killed, 34 miners were killed. All they were asking for was a living wage. After the, 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 the colonialists came and took our land, 
and they took our resource, mineral resources. When we ask them to give us a, a, a living wage, they what do they do? They respond with um, ammunition and they kill 34 workers. So that's how the government of a capitalist neoliberal system will work. It will work, it will ensure that it suppress and oppress the working class. And when the working class starts to speak out, you are shot and killed in the manner that we are, we are being killed. And if they're not using that, they will make us fight amongst ourselves and say that this is the, the reason why I'm suffering is because of my African brothers. So we are saying as a Wachal Basem John Dodo, that we must build, it is, it is only us, the poorest of the poor, that can build our own power, that we can speak our, 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 about our problems. It is not the government of the day because the government of the day has failed. Working together with our African brothers uh, from Malawi, from everywhere else, we can bring liberation, the real struggles in our continent. We can bring real socialism in Malawi. We can bring so real socialism in Mozambique. We can bring real socialism in Zimbabwe. And working together, we must build a continent of humanity, not a continent of people uh, being separated because they were born in other countries. These borders were not built by us. These borders were imposed by us, by the, neo, uh, by the, the colonialism. And therefore, we should not embrace them. We should not recognize them. In fact, we should do away with the borders. Um, we are brothers. We are human beings. And we should treat each other with that. Because a brother from uh, DRC, a sister from DRC is my sister. And one day, I will go to DRC and I will expect to be welcomed in the manner that I should also welcome my brother who was who's coming from another country in this country. So this country we are saying as a Basem John Dolo belongs to South Africans, it belongs to Africans, it belongs to migrants, it belongs to the working class. And if if it needs be, we will it is something that we will raise and fight for. Uh, we cannot be separated by capitalists who are taking resources from us and therefore divide us in a form of saying that this one belongs in this country. A borders that were imposed by them uh, in the first place. So an ANC government of the day, an illiberal system, is actually welcoming that and encouraging that. And we are seeing this very extreme right-wing uh, people who are mobilizing people for vote to say, we will get rid of the migrants if you vote for us. And the ANC is buying into that as well. Um, so so we, as Abbas al-Basam are saying, um, we, don't, we, 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 don't, we, we condemn any form of xenophobia, we condemn any form of discrimination, um, and we are saying that a human being is a human being wherever and whenever they find themselves. And um, we, we are not poor because somebody from another country just came to South Africa. We are poor because of capitalism, but capitalism is a way of us not wanting, uh, they don't want us to focus on the bigger picture that they the ones who came and took our mineral resources. They want us to focus on these little things and fight amongst ourselves. Absolutely. And Tabelo, finally, uh, Abhalali Basim Majindolo is also one of the more, most powerful social movements in South Africa because it is focused very extensively on the question of urban housing. You have an entire movement dedicated to it and a complete larger plan which talks about more than just housing but also talks about sovereignty, also talks about democracy in the complete sense of the term. So how do you sort of, what do you sort of see as the ways in which to address uh, the crisis we're talking about, which for instance this fire exemplifies? We, we, we believe that um, the solutions of the working class and the poor is, will come from the working class and the poor themselves. It is when we are organized uh, democratically from below as the working class that we can deal with this, the situation. We will be able to fight against any form of capitalism, we will be able to fight any form of neoliberalism, and we will be able to fight any form of oppression and repression that we are facing if we are organizing ourselves from the below. So Abbasadiba Sam John Dolo General Assemblies are a space for ordinary people to speak on the ground because uh, we have been created, and it, it, there's this perception that has been created by government and the elite that if you are poor, you cannot think. If you are poor, your, your state of mind has collapsed. Now we are saying the working class and the poor 
uh, it is when we are organized ourselves because the government has failed us. Now we need to organize from below as the working class and the poor and speak about issues that are, are facing us. And we are saying, therefore, our sovereignty should come from us and therefore we should make sure that we create food security for ourselves so that we do not starve, so that we use land for the benefit of the, our people, so that we don't use land for the for profits like the, the ANC-led government wants to do that. We, we want to do away with private property. We want to use land communally for the benefit of the community. No child must go to school on an empty stomach when we have land. We, so we'll continue to occupy land for those purposes, for living, for food sovereignty, uh, so that our people can eat and we create a political school where we, we actually educate our people that they are not poor because of a suddenly somebody from another country came to our country, but they are poor because there's a system that creates them to be poor. There's a system that was created by the neo, the, the neo by the um, by colonialism and apartheid. There's a system that is there that continues to be perpetrated by the ANC government. And therefore, it is only when we organize from below um, that, that the people democratically speak out in, in their voices that we can actually create a socialist and communist society where we have people sharing whatever comes out of uh, the land that we were working. So it is on the power is on us as the working class to unite and speak in one voice and create a vanguard political party of the working class that will represent the interest of the working class that will be mandated by the working class that uh, will take mandates from the people on the ground that will actually initiate what the people are saying because we don't want a top uh, down type of approach that we are facing right now where government makes decisions on, on behalf of the people and not speak to, to the people. We want a government that will speak to the people and listen to the people and implement what the people have said and not implement what the capitalists are saying. So we want to create that. We want to organize people from below, uh, though the peasants, the workers, and everyone else in the, in, in, the, in, in the rural areas, in the urban areas, the urban poor, must come together and organize. Let's come up with one voice and, 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 get, and do away with the, the capitalist government that we are having and create a government that will benefit the people on the ground. Right. Thank you so much, Tapelo Mohapi, General Secretary of Avalali Basi Majandolo, for talking about the reasons that led to the fire and I think highlighting the importance of uh, both class issues around class as well as pushing back very strongly against the kind of politics that is contributing to xenophobia at this point of time. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much, comrades. Thank you to our African brothers. Uh, we are here for them. And I'm calling on up all working class forces across the world. Um, so real socialist. socialism is about equality, ensuring that everyone gets access to health care, everyone gets access to food, everyone, no child must go to school without food and better education. So therefore, we must continue to fight this battle, um, even if it means that we put our lives on the line. Many comrades have put their lives on the line for this cause, and we should do the same until uh, the next generations, if we perish now before we realize real socialism. Uh, our, 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 our generation will thank us one day for having fought the good fight and, if, and this fight of equality, ensuring that better education, better health uh, care for all, and uh, of course, people having access to food, uh, a country um, and a world where uh, profit comes after the lives of the people. So land must be used for the benefit of the people, for its social value and not for commercial purposes. We must not allow land to be used for profit for as long as people are still suffering in this country and the world. So socialism will build um, a, a better world, a better country, a better Africa. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you so much. And that's all we have time for today. Do keep watching People's Dispatch. Visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on all the social media platforms so that you can continue to see stories from South Africa, from other parts of the continent and the rest of the world.